Hey everybody, welcome back to my layout. This will be a layout update for March 2017. Show you guys what I've been up to uh, over the past month. No, I'll start right here. I've started, uh, this is the entrance to the CP Points West reverse loop. Uh, this is a reverse loop that will be under Jasper Yard. So I started laying uh, the 1 8 rubber onto the reverse loop so you can see a huge mess. I got about 8 feet done or so just using scrap chunks of plywood to uh, make it flat and then uh, pretty much anything I can find to uh, weigh it down. I usually let it sit for about 8 hours before I take the weights off it and move on to the next section. I've demoed the old, the whole circuit of construction lights that they had put down here because I got to get rid of that for drywall and get ready. So all the pot lights are done. I wired up all the, the three pot light circuits and I'll show you the lighting diagram here in a second. It was actually, uh, it took a long time. It was another roll of Lumex, under 75 meters into the uh, ceiling with all the different circuits that uh, I'm running. Make sure you're not overloading any breakers or anything. Another thing I had ended up doing I didn't foresee or realize and this is kind of a kind of a heads up to somebody if you're doing a if you're going to build a layout in a new construction basement pay attention to where when they're going to go and do the heating system pay attention to where they put the vents because I didn't realize but you can see up here um, they got they got vents there's a six I think in total down here each one of them I had to move every single one because they had placed the vents uh, further out than this, so they were they were going to be right in the way where my valence is going to go. So I had to move them all closer to the window so that they wouldn't be obstructing the uh, lighting valence above the layout. And it just happened that every single one was in the way. So I did a, that took a two two days of working down here just to move all those vents. You can see there's another one here. So that one I uh, it, they had it over here, and uh, it was in going to be conflicting with the uh, lighting valence so I moved it back um, you know cutting that cutting that uh, HVAC piping and redoing it so every single vent I redid all of them down here so in the future uh, it would have been way simpler if I would have just came over here the day that they were doing the uh, putting the new heating system in and told them where to put the vents so that there wouldn't have been any conflicts would have saved myself two days of work so in the future, anybody building a new construction layout, pay attention to where they put the, uh, the HVAC vents. So over here by the staging loops I'd shown you last update, I think, that I had uh, boxed all this in and got it ready for drywall. Well, I went ahead and I finished the, uh, I wired all the pot lights, so they're all hooked up and uh, energized. All three, there's three different pot light circuits. So they're all hooked up, done, and uh, I put a new switch box here. And this is kind of goofy. Um, it's temporary until I finish the rest of the CN side because I'm getting to that chicken and the egg scenario where I have to get all the wiring done uh, for drywall. But to get the wiring done, you need to have the switches in secure, at least in a spot where uh, they can be, you know, they won't be damaged or anything. So. This is just temporary, I left some extra wire there, so when I do finish the CN, because the CN side will uh, come around, sits on top of the CP like this, and comes all the way around and goes across here, so it'll actually sit on top of this uh, cantilever, and I then left enough wire, you can see there, so that I can move those switches around uh, when I finally do get the CN bench work finished, and I'll be able to put them in their final spot. But they are energized right now. That switch is, uh, it works on the CN side for the pot lights. So while we're here, I'll just talk a little bit about the, uh, the switches. So I will put another one in here before I, and put the plate on it so it's safe, but I just haven't got around to that yet. But, uh, so this is going to be the layout lighting control for both sides. So the CN one's over here because I don't want to have to have all the lighting on if I don't want. Like if we're just going to be on the CP side or if I'm just running trains over on the CP side. I don't need to light the CN side. There's no point. It's a waste of energy. So added a few switches. So this is both layouts will have a 
The CP one's over by the door because that's when you come down the stairs. But the CN one is over here by staging. So if you're walking around to come over to the CN side, and I'll show you on the lighting diagram so it kind of makes sense. But uh, this will be the control for both uh, CP and CN will be exactly like this one. So, um, so the pot lights for the aisles are switched, and then there'll be the uh, main switch for the layout lighting here. So that's the lighting that'll be inside the lighting valence, all the uh, LED strip lighting. And the LED strip lights, I finally came to a conclusion of which kind I'm going to buy. And they're a hybrid strip that's got two colors of LEDs. So it's got a 32K, uh, 3200K string and a 6500K string. And you can dim them so you can change the color all the way from, I think they can go from 2700K to... 6500k so they can make a yellow light or a blue light or somewhere in between and those will be a dimmer so there'll be a dimmer for each one of those so if you want to do like we can simulate uh, like morning sunlight which is more blue or you can do like a sunset which is uh, you know like more of a golden color or somewhere in between so that's what the lighting control is going to look like on both layouts so this mess is my uh, lighting diagram I won't go too far into explaining this, but I used any rail to take measurements um, to get accurate kind of numbers for how much strip lighting I'm going to need. And that number ends up being 276 feet. So it's going to be quite a bit of uh, power down here when it's all said and done, even though it is all LED lights. Um, the pot lights are 7 watt bulbs, there's 28 of those. Uh, three circuits. So the CP side got its main circuit here. And the lighting control for the CP side of layout will be here. Like I said, when we come down the stairs. The one that I was showing you over on CN, that's right there. So the, if you're walking over to the CN side of layout, when you get there, you can hit the switches and light it up. And then, uh, yeah, it's just a breakdown of getting my circuit straight. So how many breakers I had to put in and stuff like that. Um, the wattage, I got the I kind of figured out the wattage I'm going to need for the drivers. So the CP side of layout is going to burn 720 watts if it's fully powered up. The CN side will be 539 watts. Now the total basement number uh, estimate as it stands right now, so if you've got all the lighting on, all the pot lights, all the layout lighting, it's going to be 1800 watts and uh, 15 amps. So that's why it's I think important to have lots of switches so you can kind of be a little bit economical on how much energy you're using. I don't have to have the whole layout lit up all the time. That's the, the purpose of putting in so many switches. And the last thing that I got done uh, last month was a uh, pretty big milestone. I got the workbench finished. And was, I had a big push on. because So to get the drywall done, I had to get the sink put in. And to get the sink put in, I had to finish the uh, countertop on my workbench. So... Finally, it took me a while to find something that I was going to cover it with. I was looking at, you know, countertops and stuff like that. And then I found this, uh, this poly at Rona. And it's kind of a glossy poly, 1 8 thick and uh, flexible. So I just covered the whole workbench in that. And uh, what I ended up figuring out worked well. And I wish I would have found, figured it out before I drilled the holes in it and put some screws in. But uh, if I sanded the back of this with a really um, rough... I used my Multimaster and a really, really rough um, sanding disc. If I sanded the back of this, this strip and then I glued it on and clamped it, it was like, it's rock solid. So the all the trim on the front of the uh, workbench is all glued on and it's just so solid on there. And I, when I started off put doing the uh, countertop, I was drilling holes and countersinking um, white screws in. And you can kind of see on that, there's a seam right here. And I wish I would have known that uh, gluing it, because I kind of tested one with just gluing the glossy surface and it didn't stick very well. So I gave up and I was just putting screws and then I kind of had an epiphany that, well, maybe I should try sanding it. And once I sanded it and used like a polyurethane glue, man, is that ever solid. So I finished the countertop, had the plumber come in and uh, hook up the drain line to my sink. So I got a working sink down here. That's going to be the future airbrush sink. Um, the booth is going to be, basically there will be a, a, an enclosure there to there. So when you're uh, airbrushing, you need to change a color, 
just roll back in your chair and roll over to the uh, sink and clean out the airbrush there. So that's kind of exciting. And we're looking forward to uh, having that sink so close. So it's just looking at the uh, workbench from the other side. So the workbench is done. Next thing I got to get, I haven't ordered it yet, but is a 4x8 uh, whiteboard, a magnetic whiteboard. I'm going to rip it in half. And the whole back side of the workbench is going to be all magnetic whiteboard. Uh, right up to where the layout um, cantilevers will go over. So that's good. I'm going to be working on in the uh, in the upcoming weeks. Now, one last thing I wanted to show you guys. So my friend there that has the machine shop welded me up one of these cantilevers that I wanted him to try and build for me. And I had requested half-inch tubing because I thought uh, I thought that'd be strong enough, and I won't my main thing is the clearance here because uh, there's not a whole lot of headroom there's like three inches of headroom so I wanted the the best the thinnest support possible um, to go above my workbench so I requested he build them out of half inch tubing so he did a, a test one here and I went and picked it up a couple weeks ago what I found is even the half inch tubing is not strong enough to cantilever this far and it, I'll still be able to use this one, but you can see it, it, it's got a little bit of bend to it. So we're going to go back to the drawing board and we're going to try doing the rest. The next one we're going to do out of uh, 3 quarter inch tubing. And I think that'll probably do it. I'm going to use this one over on the, uh, on the far side near the, the uh, electrical panel there, where there's not going to be a real huge need for a strong, super strong support. It's only at the end that it's not strong. It's like in the middle it's fine. But, but out at the end, just it's amazing that half inch tubing just has that much give. So that'll be something else. I gotta go pick up some three quarter inch steel tubing because I need four more brackets to finish uh, above my workbench here. So that'll wrap up this uh, layout update, guys. That's everything I've been up to over the last month. It's starting to get a little nicer outside, so. Uh, I'm finding a little less time to work on the layout, but still trying to get a little bit done every day if I can. So as always, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.